all of you in order. Please join me in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bless this Lindsburg community of people you have gathered together. Give the members of our community grateful hearts for the blessings we enjoy. Lead us to obey the laws we have established and give us a concern for the privileges and responsibilities of every community member. We especially thank you this evening for Bethany College, Bethany Home, Lindsburg Community Hospital and Health Clinic, churches, our public schools, and the many businesses that are part of our community. During these uh, difficult economic times, guide and direct us to work together to support all these institutions and businesses that make our community such a great place to live and work. Guide those who are gathered here at this council meeting to conduct the business of our community. Give them wisdom for difficult tasks, sensitivity to the needs of our community, and keep them mindful of their sacred trust in public office. Lord, help us to recognize what is your will as we make decisions, and give us the courage to follow your will and trust your promises of presence and love. Be present in this meeting and in our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Enjoy the games. <laughs> Does anybody wish to rise for public input? Seeing none, amendments to the agenda. I'll offer up the first one. Item D is going to be struck from the consent agenda and appointments will be handled separately. Are there any other amendments to the agenda? Do we have to vote on that? No. Yeah. We don't. Vote on a change to the yes. agenda. Is what is your desire on the amendment? Second. second. Been moved and seconded. Any second. discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. Mayor's report. We're going to start off with our Council appointment, we have uh, Mark Friesen with us tonight. Mark has consented to join and fill the term of Becky Anderson. We're very excited to have Mark join us on council. Uh, this will be Mark's first meeting, and with that, we're going to have the swearing in by the current chair, and then we'll take photos, Mark.
you know, what they had done, what they had seen, um, you know, involved the police in the matter at that point um, with their campus security in that. And I told him, that, you know, in, in no uncertain terms, it was very disturbing for me. Um, something that would not be tolerated in Lindsborough, but should not be tolerated in our nation either. So I guess I just want to report out to council and the public that I did take a stance, you know, against the messages and the things that were written on the sidewalk uh, at Bethany College. Um, again, it's just something that it will not be tolerated and should not be tolerated uh, in Lindsborough or our nation. So, you're all welcome to join me. They are having a, uh, a prayer and sing along vigil tonight at 9 o'clock. I believe Greg said that him and I are both going. You're welcome to join us at the Pearson Chapel, uh, show of unity in that, uh, you know, for the, for the college and, and for Lindsburg. So, if you can make it, we'd love to see you there. September meetings, uh, please keep in mind the September 20th meeting, uh, the West Star Open House from 5 to 7 at the uh, Sunstrom building. This is concerning the line upgrade and substation uh, feeder line upgrade that will be happening uh, later this fall and spring. This will be a public meeting uh, for the public uh, to see where the line is going to go and what the process will be, you know, of, uh, of constructing that line uh, to get us a more reliable power source for our Lindsberg community. We've had several outages uh, with the feeder from McPherson, uh, the alternate feeder from Salina, that both uh, are very aged process, and this will be from the uh, west off the new line that's out there that's less, a little less than a mile of uh, a new line that should give us very reliable power source for many years ago. So please join us on the 20th. Again, West Star Open House from five to seven uh, next door. Last call to see who, if anybody else is interested in going to the league conference. Greg, when is that again? Uh, October 8th through 10th. That is loud. Yeah. yeah. Uh, October 8th and through the 10th? Yes. That's this point, uh, Jerry, Rick, Greg, and myself are the known ones that are going. Yeah, yeah. Did you get that? He was looking right at him. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Let us know if there's a possibility you could join us there. Um, lots of good interaction with other communities, you know, and their leadership, but also things that the league brings forward and topics that they do have been very timely for me in the past. So we will need to know fairly soon, so they won't have to sleep in their car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unless you enjoy sleeping in your car, please let Greg and Jerry go as soon as possible. Moving on to the consent agenda, items A, B, and C. What is your desire? Motion to adopt. I have a motion to adopt. Is there a second? Then moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Joey? Yes. Betty? Yes. Rick? Yes. David? Yes. Emo? Yes. Mark? Yes. Motion carried. Item B, appointments. Tree board. Do you want to handle these all together or do you handle them individually? Terry? That's up to you. Okay, we'll handle them individually. Tree board appointment. Martha Danielson? Here. Martha's here. Where Robert. are you? Oh, good. Thank you. Probably have to stand for David. <laughs> 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 My focus won't go that long. <laughs> Martha will be joining the tree board if she is so appointed. What is your desire? Motion to approve. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Welcome, Martha, to the tree board. We'll be taking pictures of everybody afterwards. Planning and Zoning Commission, Dale Westhill. Here. Here. Dale is here. Uh, Dale has agreed to join us on the P and Z. What is your desire? Been moved and approved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We also have Design Review Board and Board of Zoning Appeals. Marv Anderson. Sorry, Marv could not make it tonight, Bill. Marv is not here. Uh, what is your desire on with Marv? I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 So moved. Last one is EMS. We have two. 
that have passed their tests, right, Chief? David Worthington and Julia Newman. David? Julia, Julia could not be. Okay. What is your desire? Motion to approve. Been moved. Is there a second? Second. Been moved to second. Discussion? I guess my question is how is Julia going to make herself available to in Did you hear the question? She did. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've discussed that and it's all straightened out, but I, I'm just curious. Right, well, they come here and they say it's the safety center is their shift. Okay. So, um, one of the things that we were trying to address with the building mm -hmm. is place for the say. They actually come and stay in that. Thank you. So, next year, or the year after, when the new building is built, that'll mm -hmm. take care of itself. At this time, let's come forward. Everyone's ready, Wood. Um, we wish to have these individuals here as, um, as a group. As a group. All new members, please join us up here.
strongs who are watching this on television and people who are in the audience and so on. We have discussed this at length. It's not really just booming it on tonight. Thank you, Dave. Penny? This, this bond includes um, some funding for some, some of the one facet of remediation um, with the their square culverts or something, is that right? Well, it, the, what we call the Garfield Drainage Project, and it's uh, a little later in the agenda, it includes uh, restrictor plates at the Coronado um, culverts, box culverts there, uh, channel improvements between uh, Coronado and Garfield Street, and then converting the two culverts uh, from, well, converting them to concrete box culverts at uh, Garfield Street. With that, this is where the funding yes. will be with this bond. Thank you. Good. And then the other portion is refinanced. Right. Thank you. Additional questions of Greg or anybody else in the other staff rooms? Hearing none, roll call, please. Kelly?
Is that good? It's good. Yeah. All right. Roll call, please. Kelly? Yes. Betty? Yes. Rick? Yes. David? Yes. Emo? Yes. Mark? Yes. Motion Gary? Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Item 9C, League of Kansas Municipality. Municipality, sorry, voting delegates. Looking for two voting delegates and two alternates. Come on, Nate, Rick and Jerry. Second. 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 Second
22,000 available between the tow train and the truck, or the shed and the steel truck. That leaves uh, 12,878 that we still need, and we had budgeted for a restricted place, which are now going to be covered on the Garfield Street project, uh, ready project, so that money will be available to make up the difference. So we recommend a motion to approve along the carpet for 2102 for the truck, and then rest the truck equipment for 12,776. Council, what is your desire? I'll make the motion to approve $22,102. Uh, portion of that, uh, no, wait, the whole amount along the Carter and $12,776 for Midwest truck equipment. Can I do those both in the same motion or do they need to be separate? You can do them the same. What is, is there a second? Second. Question. Email. I guess I'm not clear why why this wasn't a five-year budget. It uh, got dropped between. It used to be a street truck and then it went to an electric truck and then it, it just got it didn't get into the plan. I don't know what we did that. <coughs> the oldest truck should have been on there. This is like the uh, ones that run around the street. I mean, it's a flatbed. Yes. Yeah. I think it's interesting and no answer is required that there's quite a difference in what's being offered as a trade in for 12,000 here, 8,000. I was surprised. It's wrong. It's a big difference between yeah. one dealer to the next. Everybody satisfied with the with the uh, chassis? They do offer same warranty on heavy duty vehicles that are over one ton as they do on the other vehicles, correct? Um, you guys don't think this thing off road very much, do you? Like in dirt and mud and sand? Uh, okay. Uh, they did quote you one with a open differential, not a limited slip. If it's got duels on the back, it's going to get stuck real easy. I just that. Uh, yeah. I don't know that I want to revisit for that. It's been, I've been trying to get these bits together for five months now. Uh, <coughs> people, the guys, one guy's in Arizona that won't be home for another few months for six weeks. So, I don't know. I don't think we've ever requested such a depression. Yeah. So, I, I would say we're probably going to go with this one. We've got one without it. As long as you're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Kelly? Yes. Betty? Yes. Rick? Yes. David? Yes. No? Yes. Mark? Yes. Item carried. Item F is the Garfield Drainage Improvement Engineering Proposal. Uh, this is the project that we, we just discussed under the, the bonding question. Uh, it is the restricted place on Coronado with the channel uh, grading and then the uh, Replacing the tubes on the Garfield Street. This is the engineering portion uh, for Wilson and Company. Sixty thousand one hundred seventy-three dollars for the engineering. What is your desire, Council? Make a motion to approve sixty thousand one hundred seventy-three dollars to Wilson and Company. Is there a second? I second. Discussion. Will this be all the engineering that's needed? Does this get us to, to, to construction or just preliminary? It gets you to construction. I'm not sure if there will be uh, inspection services or not. Is there, this is construction documents up? Bid documents? Yeah. Up. This is fully engineered project. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> 
This concludes the engineering across the, the from Coronado to the tie-in to the floodway also. Yeah. From my own edification, the restrictor plates we're talking about on Coronado Bridge, they go under Coronado? Just north of Swenson on Coronado, there are seven uh, concrete cars. Yeah, and uh, this is what plates on them so that you could slow the flow of water going into the channel that, that goes through Westview. Okay. And we want to cause the flooding back in 2013. The plates are manual plates? Yes. The free okay. part will be responsible for monitoring high water events and putting plates in and Somewhere through all this, I lost track of where the plates were going to go. So thank you. Just one more question. Yeah. Who owns the bridge? It's County Bridge. Working out good on the county. Mm -hmm. The county will work with us. Okay. I'm talking to Justin Baker. Okay. Other discussion points? <clears throat> Roll call, please. Kelly? Yes. David? Yes. Rick? Yes. David? Yes. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Tim. EMS. Is there going to be a building? Well, I apologize for being late to the study session. I was on the phone with the architect. Um, right now, as you saw in your packet, the bid, the low bid was about $140,000 over the project budget. Um, uh, we're in, trying to work with uh, rural development on this um, from the standpoint to see if we can potentially value engineer the project. In other words, find those items that potentially could be modified or removed to reduce the cost of the project to bring it in line with with the budget. Uh, conversations have been had with uh, Weems and Company, who is the low bidder on the project. Um, first, to make sure that they included everything uh, from a design standpoint was included in their bid and they confirmed that it was. Um, the second aspect of that conversation covered whether they would be willing to look at value engineering the project. They would be willing to with the caveat that if the project does not move forward, that they at least get uh, compensated for their time and expense in uh, trying to help value engineer the project. Uh, the challenge right now is getting uh, uh, direction from rural development. Uh, some of the things we're potentially looking at is are the elevator. Um, when it was originally designed, it was a different elevator than what the state architect says we have to have, which increased the cost of the project, which increased the cost of the backup, backup generator. Um, additionally, the original fire suppression system that was specified had to be upgraded per the state architect, um, which added to the cost. Uh, it's the opinion of the architect that they originally specified when I say architect, I guess I need to clarify. The architect that we hired into to design the project uh, felt that it met codes. Um, the state architect felt it needed to be uh, beefed up. What we're in the process right now to see if the state architect will allow the project to be value engineered. Um, Talking with rural development on Friday afternoon, state architects out till I don't know the end of this week, but definitely not available. Was on the phone with the architect the, uh, from Park Architecture, the firm hired by the city, just right prior to the study session this evening, and and that's what we're we're trying to to do. I, I guess the question I would have for you as council is do you want us to continue to pursue a value value engineer type project for this or do you want to just reject all bids? I mean that's the option. Um, 
Would you please define for me again value engineering? Look at look at those items within the design of the building that could be modified in a way to reduce the cost but still meet the purpose of why you're constructing the building. We did that on the Sunstrom building um, because the bids came in over and we worked with the, in fact, it's the same, the locator on this is the same company that uh, constructed the Sunstrom building. Um, so they're willing to do it. We've gone through the process with them before. Is this an unattainable amount? Well, I guess it all depends on what all we're willing to give up. Um, you know, if we right now it has a, a basement, we can give up the basement, then we you don't have to worry about the elevator, then you can the generator, you can the backup generator can be downsized and some of the electrical needs can be downsized and you're probably in the ballpark of where you need to be. But that that space was also going to serve as a training room. It was also going to serve as a secure storage space for for radio equipment, for not just EMS, but public safety total. Um, and it was also going to serve as an emergency operations location in the event of a disaster. So is that something that we would be willing to give up? But I'm not asking for that answer right now. But those are some of the trade-offs we're going to have to look at to see if this is where we want to get that building so we can get it constructed. Otherwise, you go back to a clean sheet of paper, or it would be put off, or we wouldn't get certain funding, or was, what, what would that mean then? Well, if we go back to a clean sheet of paper, we've just taken all the money we've invested with the architect and throw it. The, the architect we hired, yeah. and throw it out. <coughs> because they're gonna want a whole new contract to design a whole new building. Um, you know, value engineering it uh, probably is at least the most economical approach in my opinion to see if we can get to a solution. I would like to, um, from my perspective, it sounds like you are on the path that you believe to be correct and you've not led us astray on a project like this before. Seems to me it makes a lot of sense to just look at a less expensive way to do this from the contractors. I think come back to the list of value engineered items and yeah. it's keep the basement a lesser elevator and a different, you know, sprinkler takes care of it or if it comes down to it, let council decide, you know, at that point we can do it with the basement, do the other things and here's the dollars that we can get within our contract. So I think coming back with options for council makes a lot sure. of sense. Well the challenge in this project in value engineering <laughs> is that the state architect has a lot of the decision making authority. So it's so it's gonna be we can identify probably identify the items. The challenge is going to be since we don't get a visit directly with the state architect ourselves on this, is to convince the RD staff to convince the state architect that what we're proposing as alternatives are reasonable solutions and still meet code. As far as the grant with um, USDA rural development, we're, we're locked in. I mean, that, that's it. Well, when it's low. Well, what? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be on here to help. So, yeah. um, <laughs> we could get potentially um, some additional funding, but to even if they would come up with 140,000, we're looking to, to service this debt and cash flow it through the, through the ambulance fund. They don't generate enough additional uh, cash flow to cover an additional $140,000 of the debt on the project. I think what I'm hearing, and I think the council will keep it in, start thinking about it as a basement. In the end, it may come down to a basement in, basement out. And uh, I mean, I want to look at all options in that, but what you just said about the state architect and everybody else, if he's the one to put in the 
heavier elevator and the change the sprinkler system. I don't know. He's going to come back and say, oh, I guess it was you know, a bad day that day. And I'll take those things away. So I think they come down to the basement. Well, one of the, on the first floor, basically, you're looking at a garage and residential space. It has a communal living space. It has separate shower and restroom facilities and shepherd, shepherd, separate sleeping quarters with the idea that at some point in time when we have to go to a paid service, we're already geared up from a facility standpoint. Well, the state architects wanted us to be above the level of fire suppression. And talk, when I say fire suppression, I'm talking about sprinkler system a full industrial level sprinkled building. Um, in visiting with the architect, one, is a residential space and not a public space. The building's not open to the public. Um, we could, right now, in his opinion, put five, eight, two, la two layers of five-inch sheetrock on each side of the wall and downgrade the fire suppression system because fire code says you only have to uh, have a fire barrier that lasts an hour. Well, with two double thicknesses of 5 inch sheetrock on each side of the wall and a lesser, more commercial or residential type sprinkler system, that's going to reduce the cost compared to an industrial type system. Um, that's an option that would have significant savings. Whether the state architect will do that or not, uh, but those are some of the things we've talked about potentially doing. What, what do we use, what do we have now for, um, I mean, we've got the safety center for, um, for training, but what, what do we have for disaster command center? Uh, the first location is the safety center, I mean. So above ground, mm -hmm. like just like, yeah, we don't, just yeah. like to be taken out as any other building. Yeah, we don't have a hardened facility. Mm -hmm. Was that going to be a hardened facility or was it just going to be a basement? Well, it was going to be a basement, but it would be a lot harder than, I can't remember what the floor on that thing was. But I guess it's, yeah, because you're going to park ambulances in. So it's well, like, no, that's just going to be concrete slab. The back end. The back end. The front end will be the, the garage space for the ambulances. On the east side of the building, the west side is a residential space. With the <coughs> well, we've gone over this also before, and we have determined as a council that we need this facility. And it seems to me like the choice right now is for you to go ahead with this, and then we may have to revisit it again. Come back to us, Greg, with options on value engineering. I think that's what I'm hearing across the room. Yeah. Okay. What's your time frame on that? I would love to give you a time frame. I, you know, since, since I was three minutes architect. late to the study session, visiting with the architect, and that, um, I don't have a timeline for you. Okay. Wait and hear back from the state architect. I mean, on the morning. Eleven fifty-nine. All right. I, we don't have an executive session tonight, do we? No. Department reports. Let's start with public works. <laughs> well, thank you. How many do we yeah. have? Four wells? Or we have four wells? Do you want to talk about the wells? Um, I'm still waiting. I was hoping to get back a report on uh, before I talk to you about the uh, alternative method of maintenance on our water tower. I've had them out, we've been inspected, and I was hoping for a report by this afternoon, but I didn't get it. Um, there are some issues that uh, we hadn't been aware of. One, the, uh, you can't even access the entryway into the tower at this point is the, uh, the hatch cover is wedged up so uh, 
we didn't get a great inspection on it. Um, anyway, I, that was going to be my plan. I just <laughs> uh, tell us what the cost would make me. Um, still think it's going to be a liable uh, method compared to $140,000 painting this this year and then uh, you know, who knows when inflation would actually reach in 10 years and it needs painting again. So I, I think overall we can save money with this. And I'm sorry I don't have the numbers for you. With this you're talking about? They will have a contract with for a year. They will go in and completely do all the payments and we'll pay them a yearly fee for it. We pay for the painting right now, which we're budgeted for 140000 in 2017, and then we still have maintenance agreements on um, $1,700, $1,800 a year. So and, uh, there's a lot of money just that goes into the maintenance on these towers, and I, I think, uh, you know, maybe a little heavy getting in it for the first time, but uh, we would save money for the long haul. Would be the company that paints it a, a yearly maintenance fee? Yeah, and it's the way it's worked in the past is uh, you get a five year warning, and if you do the maintenance agreement on it, then they'll pay it. So, do they come out and check it once a year then? Every other year. So, when did the, they were here the this opening year. get wedged open? The <coughs> door get wedged open? I just found out about it, so I assume it. They were here and did an inspection with their picking in uh, probably June, maybe, maybe May. Um, and I, you know, nothing was said about it then. They were inside, and now you can't get inside, so I would assume they did it when they left. And that's the company that I want to replace. You know, I let you replace about that. Emory over in a second. Absolutely. Uh, we had a pretty good washing this last week, uh, storm water and all that. Um, did you feel it well, storm sewers? I thought it was great. Uh, we, I think we got two and a quarter to two and a half inches in you know, 45 minutes. And, and uh, you know, was, that's a huge rain, rainfall. We uh, had spots that we had to put barricades up. Uh, Paris and Cole was probably the worst. Uh, Swenson, Columbus, uh, but they all drained really quickly. I mean, about the time we could put the barricades out, we were just about ready to start back in line taking them down again. They, in less than an hour, I think everything was fast forward. So, I actually generated another question. I'm going to go with the weekend. Let's go up. Go ahead. Uh, we never got the runoff off the hills. Right. I was really expecting that. I, I thought two hours down the road we were going to be in trouble and we did not get that. So next question. But then Kansas go up a lot. After that rain, there was so much sand that I mean, it was inches in the street. Yeah, the and line. they cleaned it up the next morning before I could even get to the complaint. Okay. But I mean, that's going to happen over and over with that sand. Yeah. I, I know you told me that that's, you're right, we're okay, but I'm telling you, just in my mind, and Rick and I had this conversation, it appears it's, all getting, it's always going to be on the street. No matter what, even in dry weather, they're going to drag all that stuff out. I agree. Yeah. I've talked to them, and I told them it's not the solution. And that, that was their inner room answer. Uh, okay. I mean, do you want to direct me to? I think wherever we get to that, I would like to see us have a better control over what, what those permeable surfaces that Gary's working on and all of that. We, we should have some control over what they put down, I think, from a stormwater yeah. point of view. Well, I, I want to be a good think neighbor, but I think we have to control You those. know, one of the questions here is, uh, in order to achieve the result we want on Lincoln Street, we have to tell them to go to a less permeable surface. But I think the, what we got back from Wilson, that uh, anything that's driven over is now going to be considered 100% impervious. So, is that right? Yes. So, I was, I was feeling a little bit bad about pushing them, knowing that the stormwater utility is coming, but now with that latest thing from the Wilson, 
That's all. But I'd be curious if you opened your storm drains. We have had several tasks. We have not had the problems with that one. I'd say that that rain might give it another look here. The other one might have all the other town. And it's just frustrating to me as an ongoing guy. But we have so many people that blow all of their grass into the street, no matter what. Um, Make no effort. Because yeah. I think that isn't that not a violation of some city code. It is. And what should we do about that? Call you? Because really, the ones who do it regularly are putting a lot of stuff out there and then goes into the drain. I have a lot of question about the water tower. I can't uh, speak for the rest of the council or anything else, but I'd still like to see something written on it. That's, yes. Uh, I would direct it to put that in the budget for the next year so that there will be. Back when I was a kid, there was some. Was there? Yeah. It was a brand new It's a ghetto gag. <laughs> well, thank you. I have a question um, to change subjects just a little bit. Uh, North McKinley, was that a mill and overlay or a chip sale? North McKinley was mill and overlay. No, that was chip sale. I think it was just a chip sale because they did. There's still all the imperfections. No, we did. Uh, and, yeah, we did uh, Swimson at third and Sleep. Sleep. Um, the rest were chip sales. This new stuff that they use, I went over there and looked. There's gravel all over the sides and stuff. I mean, it's well, that's all chip sale is. We do. We don't go out and. Repave the road and then cover it with chip seal. Chip seal is just trying to seal the road. Yeah, it doesn't have like it doesn't lack stuff before that actually stayed put. It, it's it's the same process. This is a, a one. We used to use three eighths. I believe this is half inch. So it's an eighth of an inch larger rock, and uh, they had to put using the three eighths rock because it had lead in it. So it's the same process. The same amount of oil. Just a different rock, and there's always been excess rock that we have to go and sweep up, and and probably you can't tell the difference from that, uh, any other chip seal street in the town, you know, two months after it's been put down. Yeah, I, I like the heavier rock. I, th I think we're getting more bang for our buck there. All right. Any last questions for Tim? Polly, you're up. Right. Polly, with a great picture of you in the AAA magazine. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to let Amy share first um, about how she is utilizing um, Google Adwords for the center. She has some statistics on this time. I'm going to share that first. Um, at the first of the year, you approved um, $3,000 in total, so $500. And um, so the, we're talking about from January 1 to now. Um, we have about 221 interactions, which is about for about 44,000 impressions, which means 44,000 times people saw it. From what I understand, um, interactions would mean they clicked or they called or they um, interacted with the ad in some way. Um, our total cost that we've spent thus far on these ads is well under a thousand, so um, it's well under budget, and that's because I turned it off during the non-peak times. So um, if I feel like I'm too busy to properly manage it um, during a week, then I just turn it off completely, or otherwise I usually leave it off like Monday through Tuesday, um, and then I turn it off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and turn it off for the um, because Wednesday through Friday are when our high click rates are. Um, we've also been changing the keywords to what's most effective, what gets clicked on the most. Um, I geared most of the ads for student meetings and overnight stays. Um, and I think I have about three event, uh, three meetings in particular booked from the Google. Report. So, any questions? 
What's your cost per click? It varies depending on the day, but the average is $2. The average is 2 And it also varies depending on the types of keywords. Like some keywords have higher cost per click than others, depending on like how, how, many, how often they're searched for. Mark, do you have any questions for her? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 well, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like that was right down your alley. I took some notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, do you have questions? All right. Thank you. Holly? Uh, Google AdWords for the Convention of Visitors Bureau have not been being used over the summer months as much because of the fact that our click through rate, our price per click was so high. Um, low end was ten to twelve dollars, and they were wanting fifteen dollars upwards because travel words spiked in cost um, about the end of May. So I have cut this back, and we've been utilizing Facebook for advertising instead, and at a much lesser cost. We can also see the results of that a lot better because we can pinpoint demographics better through Facebook, and um, we're seeing some really nice results with that. And one of the exciting things for me at the CBB office um, has to do with something not located in my office. And when I started in this position, we had been approved as a travel information center, a place to house and information for travel stops across the state. And Bank of America at that point in time was letting us utilize a small building on Main Street that belonged to them. They did not care for that building very well. And by the time they sold to First Bank Kansas, I was routinely mopping up water anytime rain and terribly ceiling tiles were um, just caving in because of water in, in pieces all over the floor. I was constantly down there cleaning that messes. Um, we had people that were leaving the door open frequently because it was so hot in there in the summertime. Um, the bugs, you would go in and have to clean up bugs every day, dead bugs, because they would just flock there at night with the lights on. Um, sometimes I was even responsible for leaving the door open because I would go prop it open during the day and then forget to go close it when it got to be later in the evening. So it was just a hassle to keep up. First Bank Kansas came in and they had done a very different job of maintaining the facility. They came in and immediately replaced the roof. Uh, they replaced the deteriorated wood on the exterior, painted it. And just this past week, the Bethany students came in and painted the interior for me and that was a cost that the CBB did Care. Um, First Bank Kansas is now going in and replacing all of the ceiling tile and lighting panels as well, so that will all be new. Um, Chris Lowry went in and it mostly his expense replaced it in an air conditioning unit in the travel kiosk. And so right now we have a really nice facility to utilize again. And as you drive by, you'll notice that there's a, a door panel that notes that First Bank Kansas owns that facility and maintains it, and that the heating and air conditioning was provided by Chris. So the purpose of putting that on the door, you can see out of it still is the outdoors, but it has to be on the heat in the building, and so it's a lot more energy efficient. We have noticed a big difference in the, um, just the heat in the building already in the summer months, so that's been really good. On another quick note, I have been working um, just the last month or so on my Kansas Destination Specialist certification which I decided I thought I need to get busy and just do because I go to the meetings already and I read a lot of things. I just need to fill out book reports and get my meeting notes and things. So um, as I've been working on that, though, I got to thinking that, you know, really there's no reason that as I'm learning all of these things about other state stops that I can't begin to put together ways that you can tour our state, making this work a midpoint for probably three or four tours with qualified stops. And so I'm currently looking at I partner better with other communities to provide probably a four to five day itinerary for traveling across Kansas that we can promote to group tour operators and where they can look at um, all the possibilities as they go from maybe corner to corner or from east to west, north to south. So that's it. Any questions? Questions for Ollie? Thank you, Ollie. Chief? I wanted to touch uh, briefly on uh, coffee.
Cop program that we started uh, this last Saturday at the White Peacock, and it was a very large attendance. Um, and I was very happy to see everyone show up. I know I got there at 8 o'clock, and there was nobody in the cops, and I was a little worried maybe no one would show up. <laughs> but uh, it was very well attended. Um, How many of your officers went in? All my officers. All of them were there. Okay. Uh, the Sheriff's Department originally started the program. It's a national program. Uh, they're going to be moving their copy with the cop program throughout the county. So um, it will be a while before they come back around to Lindsborg to have it here again. Uh, and that, so we decided that you know, there's no reason we can't continue the program without the Sheriff's Department. So uh, about every three months, we're going to plan an event copy with the cop and um, we've already had offers to have it at different locations in the community. I know Bethany College uh, has already called and requested that they put the club list to uh, sponsor the event there. So I'm kind of excited that it's, it's had a positive impact so far. So uh, some of the things that came out of uh, the uh, copy were, you know, some concerns uh, and code violations seem to be uh, an issue that uh, some of the citizens are concerned about. So, uh, to the public, I guess if they should know, they'll probably be putting a uh, um, concerted effort to look at code violations over the next uh, month. Tim, code violations, we have the property uh, 240 coal that still has some material left on the RV park. Is that on your list of code violations? It is. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to get somebody to mow that area so I can see what's in it. So, uh, we're in the process of hiring someone to mow that area. Uh, they've already been sent a letter, so. And another question on mowing. I know they mowed the bait lot, but you know, you look around the poles and does mowing include trim? Do they have to trim the weeds that are this tall around the poles or are those optional? I think over 12 inches is considered a violation. So even though they mow the bait lot out and they leave the stuff around the power poles and stuff, that's still a still the end violation. We could potentially hire someone to come and fix the trim. Okay. Other questions of the chief? I'll end with my last one. Did the new car make it through the brain? Okay. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> there. Yes. <laughs> I'm just glad to hear that. I'm going to hire him. I'm sure he'll help me. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate all you and your fellow officers do to keep Lindbergh safe. Others? Call for others? Mark, welcome to council. Um, have a taste of what we do and, and you know, what happens here. A lot of it is done. We do study sessions and information that you receive via your iPad and all that. So uh, anytime, please call me or call Greg and Jerry or any other council members. I'm sure they would love to work with you. And that, just welcome. Thank you. Any others? Motion to adjourn. Um, and moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 And that was close. That was like, almost like making an appointment. Uh, those opposed, same side. Okay. Thank you. Joining us, Dale. Thank you.